bar is equal to e tangential plus e normal. So they are vectors, right? So the resultant of the tangential component and the normal component will will give you the actual electric field vector. And we also know the relation between E bar and V scalar potential as E is equal to minus del V. That is, if you know the potential V, then you can find out electric field as E is equal to minus del V. Right? So, now we are going to consider a surface on which the potential is constant, equal and constant at each and every point on the surface. So what does this mean? So we are going to consider a surface on which potential is constant, right? That's a equal potential surface. So when the potential is constant on the surface, then what will be the electric field on the surface? Electric field on the surface would be the tangential component of electric field, right? Because when you say electric field E bar, it is not the electric field that is present on the surface. You split the electric field vector into two components. One is a tangential component, there is a normal component. Tangential component of the electric field is present on the surface. Normal component of electric field is present perpendicular to the surface. So, potential is constant on the surface will result in electric field component to be equal to zero on the surface because V is constant. When V is constant, when you differentiate constant, with respect to x or y or z, that will, that will result in a zero, right? So, electric field is zero on the surface. So, it is not E that is becoming equal to zero. Understand it. It is not E that is becoming equal to zero. It is E tangential that becomes equal to zero. So, for equipotential surface, E tangential is equal to zero because potential is constant on the surface electric field is will become equal to zero on the surface and that electric field component which is present on the surface is the tangential component of electric field which will also lead us to the concept of only normal component of electric field to exist on an equipotential surface because you see here E is only E normal right that means for an equipotential surface electric field is perpendicular to it. So, on an equipotential surface, only normal components of electric field exist. Right? So, electric field is perpendicular to an equipotential surface or electric field is perpendicular to equipotential surface. Electric field lines and equipotential lines cut each other orthogonally. One more way of defining the same concept. These are all potential one more questions. Electric field lines are orthogonal to equipotential lines. Right? So the lines on an equipotential surface are called equipotential lines. So if the electric field lines are perpendicular to equipotential lines, then also it is said to be an equipotential surface. So, to define equipotential surface, in addition to these three points, whenever you see that electric field is perpendicular to an equipotential surface, then you can consider it as an equipotential surface itself. Right? And what are the examples of equipotential surfaces? The classic example of equipotential surface is Earth. Earth is a classic example of equipotential surface. Right? So, the potential is constant and also equal at each and every point. So, all the excess charges can be absorbed by the earth. The other example is conductor. A conductor behaves like an equipotential surface for static fields. Right? How is it? Why does a conductor behave like an equipotential surface for static fields? See, when you take a conductor surface, you know the basic difference between a conductor and insulator is, in a conductor there are free charges present, right? 
and these free charges they keep moving from one point to another point right the charges move from one point to another point that's why they're called free charges when the charges move from one point to another point what will happen to the static field present on the conductor the moment you talk about the charges moving from one point to another point then there exists no concept of static field right so static field electric field on the surface of the conductor will be equal to zero and we already know that when we say electric field is zero on the surface it is not the whole electric field that is becoming equal to zero it is only the tangential component of electric field that becomes equal to zero so when i say electric field is equal to zero on the surface so it is only the tangential component of electric field that is becoming equal to zero do you get my point e tangential is equal to zero on the surface of the conductor that is because of the charges these are free charges and they are in motion they keep moving from one point to another point due, due to their due to the moment there exists no static electric field because now we are going to, we are discussing only static fields right so static electric field is equal to zero and e tangential is equal to zero when e tangential is equal to zero what will happen to the normal component normal component still exists so that's the reason we say that the electric field is perpendicular to the conductor surface and this is this behavior is similar to the behavior that we have seen for equipotential surface right where electric field is perpendicular to equipotential surface so conductor also behaves like a equipotential surface only for static fields if it is a real field then you can't say that conductor behaves strictly like equipotential surface but you could you could still assume that you know it is it has properties similar to an equipotential surface but for static fields it it works exactly same as a equipotential surface so this is a potential one mark question and this is a potential one mark question and also this e normal is a potential one mark question for gate ies and psu exams okay now we will discuss two more popular theorems what are those theorems we already know the relation between e bar and d bar as d is equal to epsilon e and also we saw we discussed gauss law in its point form right what was that del dot d is equal to rho v and we know d bar is equal to epsilon e bar so right del dot epsilon e is equal to rho v and also we know the relation between e bar and v as e is equal to minus del v so del dot epsilon minus del v is equal to rho v for isotropic materials write down the equation what will happen to this equation for isotropic materials epsilon is constant so you can take epsilon to the other side you get del square v as minus rho v by epsilon what is this equation called or what is this theorem called so this is the Poisson's equation for isotropic material this is Poisson's equation for isotropic materials for an isotropic material for an isotropic materials what will happen to this equation this equation would be just del dot epsilon minus del v is equal to rho v this is the Poisson's equation if rho v is equal to 0 then what will happen to del square v del square v will be equal to 0 what is this law called or what is this equation called it's called Laplace equation Laplace equation this is for isotropic materials 
isotropic materials. For anisotropic materials, what happens to this equation? This would be del dot epsilon minus del V is equal to 0. That's all. Do not play with epsilon. Don't take epsilon to the other side for anisotropic material because we know that epsilon is not constant for anisotropic materials. Important one more question. Which of the following equations represents Poisson's equation? or Laplace equation for isotropic or anisotropic materials. Now, our next topic would be the boundary conditions. boundary conditions. For electric fields. So let us consider interface separating two regions. Region 1 and region 2. Region 1 identified by epsilon 1 and region 2 identified by epsilon 2. Say electric field in region 1 is E1 and electric field in region 2 is E2. Okay. Now, we would like to understand the behavior of the electric field components at the interface separating these two regions. We know that electric field vector can be split into two components. One is a tangential component, the other one is a normal component. Right? E1 can be split into two components, E2 also can be split into two components. What is this component? This component is parallel to the interface. So you should always compare it with the interface. In the examination, he may give you this as an interface, dielectric interface. Right? So, if he says that this is the dielectric interface, then the component parallel to this interface would become the tangential component. So, always refer to the component with respect to the interface. It can be a vertical interface or a horizontal interface. So, in this case, I have considered the vertical interface as the dielectric interface separating two regions. So this is region 1 and this is region 2. So this component will become ET1, the component parallel to the interface. And this component which is perpendicular to the interface is referred to as EN1, the normal component. Similarly, this component will be referred to as ET2 and this would be referred to as EN2. Now the boundary conditions for electric fields gives a relationship between the tangential components of electric field and the normal components of electric field at the interface separating these two regions, region 1 and region 2. And how many boundary conditions exist? There are two boundary conditions. What is the first boundary condition? The tangential components of electric field intensity is continuous across the dielectric interface. 